Jay Barbary, uh, our uh, veteran correspondent who has covered uh, every manned space mission this nation has launched, is uh, with us from the Cape by telephone. Jay, what can you add to the reporting so far? Well, Brian, you pretty well covered it. We're waiting right now for a news conference to be held here at the Kennedy Space Center. It could be coming up any time. They first estimated uh, 11.30. Now uh, they're trying to get everybody together, and it could happen in the next five minutes or the hour, or within an hour, I should say. All that they know at this time is that everything was on course. Everything was going perfectly. The shuttle Columbia was speeding at 12,500 miles per hour, 39 miles above central Texas when this catastrophe took place. So there's little doubt left that the Columbia has been lost, that the crew has been lost, and that they we have tracking uh, video of it coming down over east uh, Texas and possibly into Louisiana. And as you said earlier, uh, Brian, it is essential that if anybody finds any of this debris to stay away from it because of the uh, rocket fuel on board. It's called hypergolic fuel, which simply means it's oxidizer and the fuel on contact ignites. But more importantly, if you breathe it, if you breathe it, it will set up oxygen, a uh, membrane over the oxygen sacs in your lungs and you could suffocate from it within 48 hours. So please stay away from it, keep everybody away from it, and now they're going back over all their tracking information, trying to pin down what happened to get some handle on what could have happened here at the place on the reentry brine where it was leaving space and the Columbia was becoming an airplane. Uh, space begins at 60 miles up. It was at approximately 40 miles. It had gotten enough into the atmosphere that they were beginning to use the flight control systems for the atmosphere on board the shuttle. They had turned off their attitude control thruster rockets, and it was at this point with the auxiliary power units running uh, full speed and uh, everything happening as they became an airplane that apparently something went wrong. Now, Jay, uh, you mentioned aircraft as opposed to uh, spacecraft. It would probably be a good time to talk about the notion of the black box that so many Americans have become familiar with, with commercial and other aircraft. I is it not true that in the space business there is a constant, real-time, live streaming black box in effect on the ground? That is to say, all those people we are familiar seeing at all those control panels are looking at all the incoming data, and is it not further possible to say that they could know, there could be someone now who has a fairly good idea which system failed primarily? That is true, Brian. You're looking at the black box when you look at mission control. When you see all those guys sitting in there, all of that information on all the systems within the shuttle is being transmitted down by data through the TDRIS satellite back down to mission control. They are looking at it. The only indication we got was before they lost communications with the crew, they lost some sensors. I have been trying to find out what sensors, but no one seems to know from the public affairs office or the people that I can talk to. Uh, other sources are, of course, within looking at the data now. So perhaps in this news conference coming up, we can get a little bit more information on this. But there are systems, of course, recorders on board, but the likelihood that uh, uh, a spacecraft or now an aircraft traveling at 12,500 miles per hour coming through the atmosphere, it's very uh, hard to believe that anything would be left. But they are going over their tracking data, and we also mentioned about the uh, spy satellites up there. Uh, we would have some information uh, on some of the systems that would be picking up what went on. If there was an explosion, if uh, they would have a heat spike that they would be picking up, and then they would know from that at what, what time it occurred. But most of the information, Brian, is there, just like it was there on Challenger. Uh, they suspected different things at different times on Challenger. First, the suspect was it was an engine that gave loose, but it turned out to be one of the O-rings on, the, I believe, the right-hand booster. Yes, it was a right-hand booster. But because when the shuttle took off, Challenger took off, it rotated 180 degrees and put the solid rocket booster north of all the cameras. It wasn't until NASA went and got its cameras from the north side of the beach that they saw this plume of smoke take place. They saw the 
the eruption of the flame coming between the field the joint splice of the right solid booster rocket, and then they knew two days afterwards what had happened. It took 